Okay, so here's a little trivia intro for you guys. You ready? What's the first thing Italians say when they wake up in the morning? Cafe. What's the one thing your Italian Paul would 100% ask you right after lunch? Cafe. And what would they ask if they invited you over to their place the second after you walk through the door? I want a cafe, ti faccio un cafe. How do Italians greet one another when they casually run into somebody they haven't met in a while? Dai, vieni che ti offro un cafe. Or, dai, in questi giorni ci vediamo e ci prendiamo un cafe. And I know you might be thinking, Barbs, this is an exaggeration. This is an overstatement. And yes, it... it it is. But also, it's not. Because if you live in Italy, coffee is just so much more than that. This is Barb's and you've all gotten what the topic of today's video is. Look, I don't even need to say it out aloud. I can just go This gesture says it all. If you're Italian, this immediately translates into coffee. This is how rooted coffee is in Italian culture. We even got memes, like really, really bad coffee-related memes that everybody uses. Need I say more? It could just I could just end the video here. Coffee is not only just a beverage, like a drink, but it also really is a social element. One that gives you a glimpse of how Italians interact with each other. Like for example, going out to get coffee with somebody could mean sitting down and catching up about something, or opening up about something, or even discussing something important, or even business related. But also coffee tells you something about how we like to unwind and like catch a break by ourselves. Coffee is that one thing everybody can enjoy indulge in, everybody can treat themselves with. In fact, coffee, mind you, when I say coffee in this context, like here in Italy, it always means espresso. Coffee is the cheapest item in every menu, at every bar, which is basically the way we call coffee shops, but we'll get to that in a sec. The price of one coffee, like of one cup of espresso, is on average within the one euro, one euro fifty range. And I believe that is something that probably more than anything else says a lot on how we conceive coffee, on how that is such a primary good for us. To be honest, when I travel abroad, that is still one of the first culture shocks. First reaction, shock. One of the first realizations that just hit me. Because you know, not in many other countries, people give coffee for granted this much. Like you walk around the street and count a big number of coffee shops, maybe not as many as in Italy, but like close. Still, coffee is definitely on the pricey side. Like outside of Italy, it is. It's not something that you could just mindlessly purchase several times per day. Otherwise, it would cost you big money. I know it's pretty much impossible to give one single reason why the bond between coffee and Italy is so strong. However, I've always wondered how that happened? What's the story behind? What's the story behind this endless love between Italy and coffee? So I went and read about it, and now I'm here to tell you about it. Are you excited? It is between the 16th and 17th century that coffee makes its big entrance in Italy. Coffee beans, especially those coming from Ethiopia, the Arabic type of beans, il caffè arabica, were extremely popular in the Middle East. They had been used to make this new brew that we now know as coffee even before the 16th century. So when the relationship and the trade between the Middle East and Italy became more frequent and more intense, coffee beans became also part of of the goods that they started to exchange. And do you know where that happened? Like which city was the headquarter for those exchanges? Venice. So coffee made its first appearance in Italy in Venice. The sort of botanist slash physician Prospero Alpini started to study and write about the coffee plant, the coffee beans, their properties, but also and especially the benefits you could get from them when toasted and brewed in a certain way. So that's what they started doing. Like they started making and drinking this prototype of coffee and they seemed to love it. However, we still need to wait a few more decades before the first actual coffee place finally opened in Venice. So fast forward to 1720, when in Piazza San Marco, the Café Florian opened its doors. It was originally called 
alla Venezia trionfante, but it became more and more popular as Caffè Florian after his founder's name, Floriano Francescani. So I guess they just decided to rebrand the business after a while. But the craziest thing, you guys, is that it still exists. Like, you can still go get a coffee at what is Italy's first oldest coffee place ever. It was such a fun experience. All the waiters are like all dressed up, plus they enjoy striking up conversations with you, plus the coffee quality was extremely high, and overall the coffee, as I hope you saw, was piping hot, which I love. I would definitely love to go back. It's such an immersive experience into the story of what is one of the strongest Italian symbols. I mean, it's the first oldest cafe in Italy and it's still standing. How cool is that? You know what else is cool? Going to the second oldest cafe in Italy. No, I'm serious, you guys. I really did go to the second oldest cafe in Italy. It's the Antico Cafe Greco in Rome, which opened in 1760. Now, just to keep giving you a bit of historical context, by that time, coffee had become really popular, not exactly all over Italy, but it definitely wasn't just a Venetian thing anymore. And everybody seemed to be very enthusiastic about this new coffee beverage thing, except for the church, the Christian church, because coffee was dark and it could give you energy, so it must have been made by the devil. So they decided to ban coffee for a little bit, but then they changed their minds because, I don't know, I guess coffee was just too good. The thing was, at the beginning of the 19th century, the roasting and grounding process to actually produce coffee was getting more and more expensive because of the general economy and blah blah blah. So the only two solutions both coffee makers and coffee sellers, like in actual coffee places, managed to come up with in order to balance out the costs were to either compromise the quality by blending in cheek pea flour or just raise the price. And that's when at the Antico Cafe Greco they had an idea. They cared a lot about the quality, but at the same time, they didn't want coffee to turn into a super high-end product, which would have been affordable by the tiniest group of people. So they thought, what if we keep the final price of one cup of coffee as it is, but we reduce the quantity? Like we physically put less coffee in the cup. So they went and designed and shaped the smaller cup, which is the espresso cup. The one we still drink our espresso in, not ace. They basically invented the espresso size. I'm still not sure if I'm more captivated by these stories per se, or by the fact that these places still exist. Anyways, from the 19th century onwards, coffee is just no longer up for debate. Coffee in Italy, and cafes become widespread across Italy. Trust me, I could name hundreds of them. We obviously don't have that much time. However, I'd like to mention Il Caffè Pedrocchi. Built in 1831, it is also known as Il Caffè Senza Porte, the cafe with no doors, because it, it's in Padova and it's where I live, so I like it very much. Naples as well becomes another super important headquarter in terms of coffee production. Just know that coffee is also known as the black gold of Naples. Just to give you an idea of how high standards have been up until today in terms of coffee quality. So by the 19th century, everybody knows that cafes are those places where artists and writers and academics and intellectuals meet up and hang out and discuss Things. It is towards the end of that century that cafes start to change their nature. Or let's say another type of coffee place starts to have a lot of success. And that is the type of coffee place we Italians still think of when we think of going out to get coffee. And I'm talking about il bar. Now, it's not safe to say there's only one explanation to where that word comes from, but I personally like to think it's because in 1898, Alessandro Manaresi in Florence opened his Banco a Ristoro, and he wanted to call it this way because he thought, allegedly, for the first time, he thought customers could come in and choose to drink their coffee while standing al bancone, at the bar, at the counter, instead of having to get a table. And it is also thanks to this idea that coffee places started to sort of expand their customer base and became the popular meeting places we know today. I think it's a bit easier to get this social element behind Italian coffee if we take 
all of that into account. Actually, and I'm not sure if what I'm about to tell you is a story or if it really did happen. Anyways, they say that when a certain Howard Schultz visited Italy for the first time and spent few days in Milan, he got so amazed by the sense of community he felt when going to a bar that he got the inspiration to create and found Starbucks. But who knows, maybe none of that is true. I don't know. What I do know though, is that all this talking about coffee is making me want to go get a coffee. How about we go get a coffee together? Let's go get a coffee. This is yet another proof that when you say coffee in Italy, you're immediately implying espresso. Anyways, thank you guys for joining me on this coffee run and thank you for watching the video. I really had such a sweet time talking to you. If you too enjoyed, please subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment down below and give this video a thumbs up. I cannot wait to see you next time. And in the meantime, thank you guys so much. Bye. Thank you.